Hi there. Now I've got a typical example here on working with bearings using the sine rule and cosine rule. You might like to have a go at this before I take you slowly through the work solution. So I'll give you a moment then just to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So the first thing I'd want to do then is to draw a diagram for this. And so we start then with a ship that sails from a point A on a bearing of 040 degrees for three kilometers to a point B. So let's say we mark in the point A as this point here. Just put an A there. Now, I often see students just mark in a north line, say something like this. But when you're dealing with bearings questions, I would suggest that you extend it further down. So we've got a north-south line. It becomes very useful when working with angles, as you'll see as the question develops. Now the ship sails then on a bearing of 40 degrees for three kilometers to a point B. So being a bearing, we've got to turn clockwise an angle of 40 degrees. So I'm going to assume that it's going to look something like this, that we go from A to a point B. This will be the point B here, and this is three kilometers. The angle of 40 degrees is this one, turning clockwise, remember, okay, from north. So that's 40 degrees. And this point here then is the point B. Now again, when we get to this point here, draw in not only just a north line, but extend it down so you've got a north-south line. And so the reason for doing this is that we have now got two parallel lines and we can see that the alternate angle to this 40 degrees is this one in here. So I'm going to mark that in as being 40 degrees. It's going to be useful as the problem develops. Now we're told that at B the ship alters course and sails for 5 kilometers on a bearing of 160 degrees to a point C. So at B we've now got to turn in a clockwise sense 160 degrees. So that's going to take us down say in this direction, something like that. For 5 kilometers, where this angle in here turning clockwise is 160 degrees. So we get to this point here, which is the point C. And again, draw not only a north line in, but extend it down and it becomes a north-south line. And so what we've got to do now is find the distance AC and the bearing of A from C. So we need to find this distance from A to C, first of all. And then for the bearing of A from C, this will be an angle measured from C. We just move up here, say, turn in a clockwise sense about this point here until we reach the line C to A. So it's this angle here which represents the bearing of A as measured from C. Now, in order to get the distance AC, we already know two lengths, the three and the five kilometers. So if we have the opposite angle to AC, this one in here, angle ABC, then I can use the cosine rule. Well, I do have all of this angle because this little bit in here is going to be 20 degrees, the remainder of 180 minus the 160 degrees. So I hope you can see why it's important to extend these lines from the north through the point into the south direction. It gives us an opportunity then of using alternate angles and also this idea of 180 degrees minus this angle. So using then the cosine rule, I just put it in here, from the cosine rule, I'm assuming then that you're familiar with this. If not, as I say, do check out the videos I've got on this. We've got the side that we want, in this case AC. We square it and it's equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that's going to be 3 squared plus 5 squared. 
and then we subtract twice the product of those two sides, so it's 2 times 3 times the 5, and then we do the cosine of the opposite angle, which will be 60 degrees there. Now, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, and you should find then that you get this turns out to be 19. So we've got AC squared then equals 19. And so if I just come down here and continue on, we've therefore got that AC will be equal to the square root of 19. And that will be 4.358 and so on. And let's say we round that to two significant figures, then that's going to be 4.4 kilometres, and I'll just put that to two significant figures, 2SF for short. OK, well, that's the distance AC, so just border this off, so give ourselves a little bit of space to work with. Now, we've got to get this angle in here, which represents the bearing of A from C next. And in order to do this, really I'm going to need to know this angle in here, which I'll call theta. And I also know, by again alternate angles, if this angle is 20 degrees, then it's alternate to this one in here. So I'll mark that in as 20 degrees. So once I've got the angle theta, I can easily get this angle around here, the bearing of A from C, by adding these two together and subtracting from 360 degrees. Now there's two methods that we could use here to get the angle theta. We could use the cosine rule because we know all three sides of the triangle. Or we could use the sine rule because we know the opposite side to the angle theta. And we know another side, AC, which we've just worked out, and its opposite angle of 60 degrees. Now I'm going to choose the sine rule, but uh, I'll leave it up to you to just experiment if you want to, and use the cosine rule. You should end up with exactly the same answer. So I'm assuming then you're familiar with the sine rule. So we start with sine of the angle theta, so we have sine of theta. It's compared with, divided by its opposite side here, which is 3 which is exactly the same as comparing the sine of 60 degrees with its opposite side, AC. So we have sine of 60 degrees compared with or divided by the side AC. Remember to use the unrounded version here. Let's just say it's root 19, OK? So just rearrange this for sine theta by multiplying both sides by 3. So you end up with sine theta equals 3 times the sine of 60 degrees, and that's divided by the square root of 19. Then, if you work this out on your calculator, you should find you get 0 0.5960 and so on. And so to get angle theta, all we need to do is take the inverse sine then of 0 0.5960 and so on. Don't forget to work in degrees mode on your calculator and if you do you should find you get 36.586 and so on degrees. Now we've got to get the bearing then of A from C. So I'll just write that in, the bearing of, and I'll just move this down here, A from C. And to do that, that's this angle then round here, I just need to do 360 degrees and subtract from that angle theta, which we've just seen is 36.586 and so on degrees, and add that to the 20 degrees that we've got. Working this out, you should find you end up with 303.41 and so on degrees. Now, for bearing, we normally give them as three figures, so that bearing will be 303 degrees. What I'll do is I'll just say to the nearest degree. And there you have it. So I hope that's of some use to you if it caused you any problem. 
but well done if you were able to get it right.